Good morning, and welcome to the Mesa Chamber of Commerce Inside Business Podcast. My name is Sally Harrison, and I'm the CEO of the Mesa Chamber of Commerce. Today, we are in the University of Phoenix podcast studio, and joining me as today's guest is Larry Young, the owner of Boiling Frog Development. Larry, that's a really unique name. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us how you uh, came about that name. Yeah, I did. You know, I had spent a lot of time in the corporate world. And what I found out with, with leaders and, and even in the sales world, a lot of people don't recognize that their environment has changed. So when you think about the parable of the boiling frog, it's really the idea of you throw the frog in the hot water, it senses the danger right away, mm-hmm. and then jumps out. Sure. But what when you boil it, you'll put it in cold water, slowly turn it up, and the frog doesn't understand that or right. recognize that the environment's changed. So what you realize in business and with our leaders today is changes that are so subtle Mm -hmm. or sales environment that is so subtly changing, they don't recognize and they don't adapt, which then becomes their demise. Sure. That's a great name. We love it around the chamber. (laughs) So in addition to owning your own company and lots of other things that you do, you are now an author and I'm holding a brand new book. I mean, like. This is pretty exciting because I ordered this and I got it yesterday from Amazon. It's Walk the the Sales Plank. Yes. Tell me about that. Yeah, that was a that was an interesting creation and that was the years that I had had in the sales environment. Mm-hmm. And really what it was designed for is the people that are kind of in that B2B space, the business to business or the business to high C, which would be your, you know, your financial services, your mm-hmm. planning, wealth management. And the book is really designed because the selling era the new era of selling has changed and it allows them to understand how that's changed that subtle change like the boiling frog Mm -hmm. and then be able to make adjustments so that they can offer more value to the people that they call on Mm -hmm. they can start to differentiate sally from themselves so that they don't have to compete on price it's pretty exciting it is exciting i'm 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 excited because i i got a little snippet ahead of time to get to read it and it really it it's I think it's going to be a great read for anybody in business. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. No, I'm, I'm excited about it. I want to share it with a lot of people. Um, you've been in an executive leadership position, and your teams have been responsible over the years for growing market share. What's really changed in the new era of selling? Yeah, so I talk about this concept in the book about the new era of selling. And what it used to be, Sally, is that the sales professionals used to go out and they would call on customers and try to – and try to uh, you know create value and create rapport. But what's happening in the new era is that your buyers today are wielding more power over the buying process than ever before. Mm-hmm. And so examples of that, you know, the internet's not new, but how buyers are using it and their vetting organizations, the there's statistics now that show that 65 to 70 percent of the buying decision has already been made before they'll even let you in the door. Mm-hmm. So they've already vetted you as a salesperson. They vetted your organization, the products, the services. They've done all that. Mm-hmm. And so what that's done for sales professionals is that it doesn't allow them the time to create value. But in the sales world, we haven't done a really good job. So over the last 40 or 50 years, we've done the same old sales training, which is, you know, trying to get past the gatekeeper, do Always. anything yeah, yeah, anything to get an appointment, and then turn around, and then you had to overcome objections. And really, at the end of it, the buyers today and the decision makers have decided, look, I can vet it now myself. I don't need you. And that's where they run into problems. Then you're left to just competing on price. Well. We, we run into things like that here, but yeah. we, you know, we talk to a lot of our members that are running into that all the time. Absolutely. What exactly is sales industry expertise versus what sales professionals did in the past? Yeah. So the, the first section of the book is really the highlights of, of what sales industry expertise. And what this means is that you're acquiring knowledge of the industry that you sell into. So as an example, if you're trying to take back that power, that buying process, if I'm in banking, let's say, and I, and I do a lot of financing or selling and manufacturing, I'm becoming an expert in what's happening in the manufacturing industry. Mm-hmm. And the reason for that is so that I'm able to deliver keen insights and value add to my customers and have conversations that are well beyond the products I sell. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the biggest things that's changed. There's a There's a fascinating survey out there that really epitomized this, and there's a lot of research to it. But LinkedIn did a did a survey of 1,500 buyers, mm-hmm. and they looked at the people, the decision makers, the people in the B2B world that sales professionals are calling on. Right. Resoundingly, 89% of them, Sally, said that they are looking for salespeople and will do business with salespeople that bring keen insights 
industry trends and can add some value add to the relationship. Mm -hmm. You remember the recession of 08. So the, you've got businesses out there that are doing more with less. Mm -hmm. And so the, what's really changed is that your buyers and decision makers don't have time to sit around and say, tell me about your business and educate right. a sales professional on what's going on. Right, that person better be educated before they ever go and make that, yeah. that sales call. Yeah, well, if you think about it, if you walk into somebody's shop, like in the old days, and you would say, thanks for letting me in here, now tell me about your business or tell me what keeps you up right. at night, you have just admitted to that person that you know less than they do, mm -hmm. or that you're never really gonna be able to position yourself as right. a trusted advisor. Right. So when you come in and with control and you understand that, that that sales industry expertise, that allows you to hold the conversation. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've heard you talk about how your connections and your expertise help you to enter the buying circle before your competition. Tell us about how sales industry expertise m can make a difference. So, so being able to enter it in early is how you start to sound different. That sales industry expertise. So, think about Sally when even in the chamber when you're calling on businesses or perspective. Mm -hmm. When when you call them and say, "Hi, this is Larry Young with XYZ Company. I'd like to come out and talk to you about your business." and see if we if, see if there's something we can do for you there's no value add in that right now for years if you worked with a good organization you may have been able to get into the door but the problem was the meeting was never set up for the most value creation so what you do now is with the sales industry industry expertise is it sounds different so now it's sally this is larry with xyz i want to come out and share with you two trends that are happening in your industry two trends that are going to affect your top line revenue your cash flow or your bottom line Mm -hmm. And these are going to affect you in the next 12 to 18 months. The only purpose of me meeting with you is to share that so that you can make an informed decision with your leadership team and, and head that off. How does next Thursday sound? I would think most people would be really surprised to have a phone call like that. Absolutely, because it sounds different. But what you're exactly. also doing is not only are you able to enter the cycle, and in the book we talk about authentic connections as well in the next mm -hmm. section, which helps you enter in as well early. But what it does is it helps you provide the most value and control that meeting. Mm -hmm. What's changed is when, when you went out there and said, tell me what keeps you up at night, I have put the control on you, mm -hmm. right? So you, right. you're controlling the conversation. And, and what this does is it allows the sales professional to take back that control because mm -hmm. now you're engaged in what I'm saying. Right. I'm taking you down a path of what's happening in your world and then how my world intersects with that. That's how you win in the new era. So a great way of looking that's a, that most people I don't think ever think about yeah yeah how can you use sales industry expertise to differentiate yourself from your competition so when when you're going out there and you now now let's now let's put you in the meeting sense as mm -hmm. an example so that's entered in early but when you get out there now the meeting sounds different so instead of like I said turning the power over to them if you've been in sales long enough and you walk into somebody's office and you say, tell me about your business or tell me what keeps you up. You don't even know what you're going to get. Right. You can get somebody that's very short. You can get somebody right. that's very long winded and you don't get anything accomplished. Mm -hmm. But how it makes the biggest difference is you start to control it. So the way what's really changed is that back in the day, we used to try to create rapport for a long time. Right. We were always taught to do that. You remember? Build you remember, relationships. Yeah, build relationships. And you'd go into somebody's office. Remember how they used to teach us, like, go go look at the pictures on the wall or the diplomas yeah. or do they have yeah. kids? Are they a golfer? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> to try to create that rapport. And right. then you would try to create credibility with either what mm -hmm. you did. The problem with that is it's all about me mm -hmm. as a salesperson. We're talking about me, me, me. What right. can I do? What can my company do? In this way, you're actually turning that control over to, to, to yourself. You're holding that control. Mm -hmm. And so the sales industry expertise, you're capturing their attention. The change is build credibility first. Mm -hmm then build rapport right that rapport, makes sense. rapport is incredibly important for a sales relation for any relationship sure. but at the end of the day it sounds more like sally thanks for meeting with me let's get down to business here's the first trend that affects your business sure. now you're into it and the people are seeing you different i like it so that's pretty fantastic stuff seriously the book I'm really excited about the book. Next time, I want to go deeper on how to use sales industry expertise to take control of sales meetings and, as you say, have a conversation so valuable that they want to pay you for your time. Pay you for the time. Yep. That's, that's key, right? Yeah. All right. So, um, again, Larry, you've got this great book out. We want everybody to consider going online, go to Amazon, and 
purchase your book or maybe many books for a book club at your office. The book is called Walk the Sales Plank. And um, the author is Larry Young with Boiling Frog Development. And, uh, you know, I've started reading it. I'm excited about it. And we hope everybody else will be just as excited. Today on the Inside Business Podcast, you can find all of our episodes on the Inside Business Podcast at iTunes, Google Play, or your own favorite podcast website. You can also find them online at mesachamber.org.